The War Within is coming soon, and we've recently talked about, you know, uh, melee DPS, what's going to be the best. We've talked about the best tanks. It's time to delve into ranged DPS, boys and girls. The people who like to sit back and blast away and parse their ass off and not do any mechanics. Well, if you want to do that in The War Within, let's figure out what ranged DPS you should play. War Within is just around the corner, but what should you play in the new expansion? Something that does the most damage because you just got dumped, so why not abuse the crap out of some bosses to vent? The most fun Hunter spec all the way. because who cares huge. about performance? You aren't even using a DPS meter, you rascal, you. Or the easiest then for sure. That way you can focus on mechanics and play with one hand while chugging on a cold one with the other. Let is. me help you out then as we look at the range DPS specs for the next expansion. To be fair with you right now, easy, fun or most damage is relative. The first two criteria are very subjective and individual, although there is some objective fun we will be talking about in this video, sure. while DPS is something that can change overnight. No, hey, really. Before he gets into this, off the bat, I personally thought Mage looked like, based on the keystone affixes, Mage looked like it's going to pop off this expansion. The last PTR we had for 10.2 Assassination Rogue was looking to be the best boss killer in the game with a King's Bane playstyle. Then, just before the patch released, it was nerfed and it ended up as the least performing Rogue spec. Right, that can However, happen. However, the specs I will talk about today are very likely to have at least above average damage output. And you cannot play any ranged DPS in WoW, let alone The War Within, without a proper gaming keyboard. And this video sponsor. And I am talking Ooh, about the Steel, Steel Series Apex Pro, the world's fastest keyboard. So fast that it does the entire combustion window all on its own. It has what? 20 times faster actuation and 11 times faster response than any traditional mechanical keyboard. With the ultimate control options, you have a range of over 40 levels of per key actuation Damn. from 0.1 millimeters to 4 millimeters. With this, you can set how hard or how soft you have to press down on your oh, keys yeah. for that spell to get out. That's good stuff. I set my WASD keys to 0.4 millimeters so that movement is super crisp when I dodge the fire on the ground. It's fully customizable and stupidly fast with the Omni Point 2. Hold on, he's being he's being dis honest here though he just said dodge the fire mages don't dodge the fire they stand in the no fire adjustable hyper magnetic the dishonesty switches. in this ad not is to mention for those intense and plus keys the rapid trigger eliminates the latency arising from the physical you movement the of the parts. switch with a dynamic activation and deactivation of keys based on the travel distance rather than a fixed point in the key travel with a USB pass-through covering its OLED smart display as well, you'll get all the juice you need for what has become the best and my favorite Damn. gaming keyboard since the typewriter. We cannot since recommend Apex typewriter. Pro enough and you haven't played video games proper until you had one of these babies to give your fingers the power to blast your DPS meters. Thanks SteelSeries for sponsoring this video and to get yours, make sure to click the link down below and apply the promo code MARCELLIAN to get 10% off of your purchase. There it is. Starting with Fire Mage might be the safest thing we can do. It has been meta almost every season and I when it Fire wasn't, Mage. it was either really good or had an off spec that pushed the content like Frost Mage in raids and right now or Arcane overall. Yeah. I believe Arcane was even used in the race world first in 10.2. This is something to think about if you are the kind of player that is afraid for their main if they are not meta. Although I wouldn't suggest to play in any environment where the choices of your spec can be <clears throat> met with discrimination. Yeah, nah, that, that make players speak a particular... Statistically, I can't really say, but it, it just feels like if you want to play a, a DPS spec that always has at least one spec that's like a top three or top five, it feels like Mage and Warlock have always been the safe bets. Maybe Rogue. That those have been like the safe specs. That uh, There's always one of their specs is going to be top five. Hunter has been there too at times, but at times it's been, it's had its iffy moments, especially with some of the redos and all that. Now, recently, Hunter got completely revamped every single spec across the board, so we'll see how they do. Um, but uh, no matter how bad, yeah, it, <laughs> I will always be worried about it. Me too. I mean, I play Blood Decay no matter what, but I'm just saying, some people really care about this stuff, and if they do, 
Major Warlock's probably your safe bet. Respect because they saw a streamer or esports team use it and up it. themselves <laughs> more and the respective player as well. That aside, Fire is just on another level. Take her heal too. In terms of spec design, we here at Marcellion Online consider it the perfect spec in the game. This is purely from the technical standpoint. If certain spells or talents are over or under tuned, well, then that is what it is, and hopefully they get some attention. But as far as picking Fire Mage, opening up your spellbook and talent tree, it all makes sense. As you put points into- <clears throat> Mage was my main for a long time before I got into Death Knight a lot, and I have to say, combustion windows and everything, Mage is a, is a ton of fun to play. It's a dopamine ride, that's for sure. Your tree, Getting whether it is because you boosted your character, mm. swapped from Frost or Arcane, or even leveled from scratch, you slowly start to figure out what's what. Here you have Phoenix Flame stuff. Here you have Living Bomb stuff. And there you have all of your Fire Blast stuff with all the Flame Strike talents right over here. Which one do you want to play with? They all have options for single target encounters, multi target encounters, and both. You can opt to have Giga Priority Damage and then just cleave some damage on the rest of the mobs or press Flame Strike and let time decide if your fat overall DPS is a problem or not. Not only that, you can simplify your playstyle if you don't want to rack your brain too much since this is a video game after all. With stuff like Quick Flame, you eliminate the gameplay restrictions of Flame Patch. With spontaneous combustion, you don't have to worry about optimizing your charges of Fire oh, Blast damn. or Phoenix Flames for your upcoming combustion window, since you get all of them anyway, that while Unleashed Inferno pop. gives you more combustions without having to figure out when and how to hard cast a Pyro Blast, risk having to interrupt that cast or completely mismanage your Sun King stacks. The same can be said about the hero talents as well. Sun Fury is likely the one that winks at you the most, and that's because Sun Fury is the lady in red. Very <laughs> hard not to notice or turn away from. You generate Spellfire Spheres over the course of the fight, and when you use your combustion, you I've summon- I've been seeing these animations. Yeah, you like summon a fiery phoenix, and it's it's kind of like the uh, water elemental, but for fire. A phoenix that blasts your enemies. Really cool. For each sphere you have, your phoenix will cast either a greater power blast or a cane surge. Damn. And your spheres can be a mechanic you manipulate to change some stuff as you play. Frostfire, on the other hand, is going to be simpler. It will be like driving your so car, cool. and occasionally it will turn into a Bugatti for a few seconds, <laughs> becoming much faster to play. Things will happen more often, and you will feel like you drank your first coffee of the day, only it was spiked with 3 milligrams of epinephrine. Congratulations, you can now see... Yeah, fi <laughs> What a pause. Fire Mage looks freaking unbelievable. A freaking phoenix that blasts fire up. Pyroblasts beside you. Oh my god. He sounds and also understand how to divide. Imagine if you crit properly and everything works out perfectly in a PvP match and you double pyroblast the shit out of something. I'd buy zero. Fire Mage is a oh banger. Man. A contender for my personal main. And if you ever have to off spec, Arcane and Frost are almost just as amazing while being just a button away. Ever wondered what it would be like to order a pizza that had one slice margarita, one full cheese, one pineapple, and one with a red murloc on. All while not being judged by anyone because, unlike you, they are too busy still watching this video to see how much fun you are having. That is Demonology Warlock, the spec in Demo. the game that gives you all flavor of demons, from the standard and That's respectable right. to the down. You could summon a raid boss. Did you guys see it real quick right there? Freaking summoning a massive... Uh... Uh, Demon Hound or whatever the hell they're called. I, this thing looks. Look at these portals just opening up everywhere. In the game look at that this shit. gives you all flavor of char hound. from the standard and Badass. respectable to the downright weird and degenerate, and all can be yours if you would just stop caring about what your doctor said. In terms of actually building your demonology warlock, the benefits are similar to Fire Mage. You have a lot yeah, of diverse talents really nice. and flavors of the spec based on what demons you want to use, and they all have both AoE and single target applications. Not only that, you have an extra factor of cool, dialed up to 11, with a new Doom talent and the reworked Cost. Vile Fiend. Doom is a I have to say, honestly, I think maybe it was like Legion where the turn happened, and maybe just after Legion, but a Demonology Warlock, Blizzard has done such a great job of leaning into the fantasy of what a Demonology Warlock should be, and that's basically somebody who's just summoning a constant army of demons. It's been really cool to see the, the evolution of Demo Warlock, and they've been in a good spot for a long time. 
It's a pretty safe spec to pick if you're going to pick one and you're worried about oh, how adjustments are going to happen down the line. Essentially what you think Demonology is supposed to be if you only have been playing really good fantasy games so far. One button adds so many gameplay implications that, all that it makes it Jesus. ridiculous we ever had any other version of this talent. It does damage. It generates shards. It spawns the biggest of the baddest of the demons. It resets and rinse and repeat. The new Vial Fiend is a mini cooldown and can transform into one of two hounds. Gloom Hound is going to be your boss killer. Awesome. It will hit its target with a strong slash attack, while Char Hound will remind people why it is not good to leave your oven running when you go on vacation. And this is and this is your multi to hit. Okay, all these extra demons you have to interact with sounds annoying and too much. Simply go with all of these Felguard talents that will buff your main demon to Sargeras levels and it will Damn. all be passive Badass. and work with your tier set. And we haven't even touched on the hero talents. Dude, Diabolist will be your favorite way to play Warlock and you might be, yeah man, I get it. Look it has the best animations and does Jeez. giga damage. But you don't understand. I do wish, you see the Felhound right there or the uh, whatever they call it, it's... Um... The Charhound. I kind of wish it was bigger, because when it first came out, it was actually almost it was like half the size of the raid boss, and they shrunk it down a lot. Stand. If they I want it to be a big these boy. talents from the game once the World Soul Saga is out, you will have to stop playing video games since nothing will ever be the same. If you think I'm overreacting, you clearly haven't seen this <laughs> bit lord channeling his demon magic while you summon a demonic meteor to delete pixels from the video game. Hell colors, all right. I, I mean, you do broken damage. It's good. I don't know. Might get nerfed because OP meta Exodia Yu-Gi-Oh trap card for amazing, right. fun, multiple playstyle builds and likely a high DPS spec in season one. Cannot go wrong with Demo. Dracaris. <clears throat> I said. Dracaris. No, no, no. I don't think you understand. What I meant was. Dracaris. Ah, uh, if okay. only drag theaters would be real dragons. But don't let if that only. stop you, because you would be missing out on devastation in the war within. Despite now resonating with the visual representation of the spec, the gameplay was always fun, albeit a tad bland in Dragonflight. That changes in the war within, mostly because... Now, of I wonder one thing, though. I think if you're playing um, a spec like this, you won't be able to fight in Visage form, because fighting in Visage form is going to be a thing in the war within. But some of these abilities are like specifically shooting fire out of your mouth and shit, which is very dragon. -like. Come, let us lay waste to this realm. The Canvas, thank you for the sub on YouTube. The Welcome hero talent. Oscar. The spectre is fine and it will continuously undergo changes just as demon hunters got as the class gets more tenure. It could use a bit more diversity in its builds, but that's where skill commander and flame shaper come in. Everything that you ever thought was cool about dragons can be summarized in one ability. Deep breath. This is the coolest shit Evoker nice. does you turn visually, it and with Scale Commander, it it's will be a cool. bigger part of your gameplay. The interactions you get from it with how explosive it can make your rotation makes you ironically feel like more of a dragon than ever. Of course, Mass Disintegrate isn't bad either, and swapping your resource spender around based on how many targets you are fighting adds a level of engagement to the spec that wasn't present before. I will say, like, if you enjoyed the Plunderstorm style combat, right, like the very dynamic, oh, aiming and all that shit, uh, this is probably the best uh, class slash spec to play for you. If you really like that, uh, the, these Drakthir have a lot of uh, that, you know, aim and charge ability stuff. It's, it plays different than a lot of classes in the game. And as for build diversity, that's where Flame Shaper comes in. It feels like it's something that should be baseline, but Flame Shaper enables you to use talent, particularly focused around Firestorm, that you wouldn't normally use. That's likely because Firestorm was nerfed too hard during Dragonflight beta and never buffed back, making you play the same build for two years. Swapping that around with the hero talents is very welcome and at the end of the day It's just because firestorm and its talents are super fun Pair nice. these up with the dot playstyle of engulf and the general hero talents and you have a new flavor of devastation You haven't played if anything It's very dragony in the way you set fire to pretty much everything if drag tears would also look like actual dragons world of warcraft would have more players than league of legends They just needed to make a buff man I don't know why the skinny boy dragon had to be a thing. Like, it could have been a thing. It could have been an option. But why not give you the buff option, too? You know, like the, the dragon is, man. I don't know. That'll always be a sad miss on Blizzard's part. Which, ironically, lets you play with actual dragons. 
The overall gameplay is very simple and engaging. You get a lot of procs and all of your damage is mega explosive. Whichever dragon fantasy you want to enact, whether it is the soar over the battlefield as a scale commander or burn all your enemies to bits as a flame shaper, Devastation is the way. And if you want to know how these specs rank against all the other ranged DPS in the game, you have to check our tier list on it since we played all of them already on beta with the tier Ooh. set and it was a nice experiment for science. Very cool, uh, nice nice video. I mean, based on this video, his tier list probably ranks out some of these as the top ones. I mean, what do we see? Fire Mage, Diabloist Warlock, all that stuff, uh, Demonology Warlock, and uh, Devastation Evoker, probably gonna be some of the better ones. Hunter got reworked like crazy over the over the last week so hunter might be one of the better ones too seeing and i've heard, seen a lot of positive feedback about them uh nice video from rosalian